Alright, welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are in our Crusader Kings 3 introduction series. And this will be another campaign episode with Jarl Dyer the Stranger. But this time we're going to be focusing on warfare and having a little conversation about characters. Because I do think that understanding how to use a high diplomacy character is really important. But we're also going to be fighting a war here. And in this case, we're going to be declaring war on Yedison and trying to take Karakarman. And now we get to use all of these characters that we've recruited for, for various warfare purposes. So why don't we take a moment just to discuss them. So the first thing that we've been doing is we've been befriending characters with very high prowess and inviting them to our court. High prowess characters are really useful because they're going to be acting as champions, knights, whatever. Um, and they are a part of an army. And whenever there's a, a combat... Especially if you have a whole bunch of really, really ridiculously high prowess characters, you're going to see that like all your damage, especially at the beginning of the game if you only have levies, is going to be coming from those champions. Because we have these big Huskarls, the champions aren't as important, but they're still going to be punching way above weight. But another really useful thing that you can do when you're befriending people is just finding characters with really high stats so you can staff up really well. And given that we're planning on making a long journey, I want to get as much talent in our court as we can. And so we are specifically going through and befriending characters who are either really good commanders, really good soldiers. Oh no, I've gained the trait ill. But we've gone through and we found characters with really great commander traits too. So there are some really important ones. Um, here, for instance, we've befriended a 24 marshal uh, organizer with 25% movement speed. This is going to be one of these cases where these commanders are going to be doing a lot of work for us. Oh no, I just I just clicked through and gave our uh, genius son content. So maybe maybe we will have a genius son who is content, and then we'll have a a mediocre son who succeeds with uh, more capable brothers. We'll find out. But military engineer is very powerful. Siege phase time is really powerful for just churning through these wars. Reaver is incredibly powerful when you're a, a raiding character. And then finding anybody with genius or intelligent can also be really helpful because they make for very good tutors. And so if you're looking for somebody to educate all your kids, that's a great way to get there. Oh my god, like half my family got carried off by Khazars. That's why we're that's why we're packing up. Dyer is tired of having his kids getting kidnapped. I guess we'll we'll pay ransoms for them this time. All right, so there we go. We won that war just by purely sieging people down. You can get wars like that too sometimes. But now because I know what our goal is, our goal is ultimately to just kind of sneak our way out to to the Indian Ocean. I don't really care who we put in charge wherever. All right, so now that we've migrated to controlling Karakurman, we can move down to Crete. Now, we could use a Varangian adventure, but I want to save that for when we're moving into India. So um, instead, we're going to do Conquer Duchy. Now, this part is optional, but I do recommend it if you're playing something like this. I'm splitting off my hired sol soldiers and special soldiers, and I'm keeping them behind. And that allows them to simultaneously work uh, as like a, a raid patrol force in an emergency, but also preserves them for a larger fight because... We don't need them to win this war against Crete. We have 1,200 heavy infantry. Why on earth would we need our special event troops here? We're going to be attacking Egypt. I'd much rather have them there. And now we have a vassal in charge of Crete. So that means that now we can use Crete as a springboard to attack Egypt. But before we attack Egypt, I think we might as well replenish our, our horde. We're 35 years old. We're in fine health. I think we have time to launch one big raid against Egypt, and then we'll get back to war. But this is something that is unique to the way that Vikings can conduct war. Most characters are going to be conducting war via holy wars. Holy wars can be waged against characters that are evil against each other, as well as hostile. But typical holy wars have to be done either through adjacent duchies, or over one sea zone. Asatru Norse characters can do it through multiple sea zones, and so you can take territory that's much further away 
And so that's what we're doing here, because we, we want to get our way down to India with as few wars as possible. And I don't really need control over all of Egypt, because I think pretty much guaranteed whatever territory we take whenever we do our uh, our final Varangian adventure, all of the things that we leave behind are going to be lost. But that's okay. That's That'll be like fun historical artifacts scattered throughout uh, life, right? Someone finds coins from Viking adventurers in Crete, even though they were only there for a couple of years. This point should be self-evident, but for those of you who have not played with a raiding character, if you ever notice a powerful rival is in a, a war kind of far away, like in this case, they're in a war in Nubia. Like they're they're in a war on basically the other side of the world. Um and so in their military strength is pretty low by now. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to just burn Byzantium to the ground before we leave. And so that's what we're doing. All right, so I think that we have our strength together. So one thing that you want to keep in mind whenever you're declaring war in Crusader Kings 3, not only should you be checking their military strength, you should be checking what is composing their military strength. So in this case, we see something that counters heavy infantry. Oh, oh that's a lot of our, our units. And then we see something here that counters light cavalry. That's fine. And then Mubarizun uh, also counters heavy infantry. So there's a lot of stuff here from the Tulunids that they can use to counter our heavy infantry. And given that our units are two Huskarls and then a spearman and an archer, the majority of our units are, are going to be heavy infantries. But the rest of our stuff, we, we have good counters here for light cavalry and good counters for skirmishers. So I think we're going to be able to declare war here, but we will need to use some of this money, which we did get to complete the round and raid basically all of Byzantium to the ground, at least all of uh, Greece. So that's a that's a fun little historical artifact here is Prince Dyer on his march out towards India did in 886 pillage most of, of Greece. We're also going to declare war for Cairo. This is the... the biggest problem for uh, the Tulunids if we take it, but I, I think that ultimately they're going to be fighting us back anyway. We might as well take their capital, then they'll be weaker in case they get any any ideas while we're marching our way out here. But in the meantime, we will raise all armies. And as I mentioned, we are actually going to go ahead and find, we're going to find ourselves a mercenary band to hire. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and start sieging down Cairo. In CK3, Whatever territory you, you choose as the war target is the territory that you need to siege down in order to have control of ticking war score. And so we want to just get control of Cairo. We're going to get that on the books and then we'll keep chasing the Egyptian army off. And now we've uh, briefly seized control of Cairo. I guess you could you could chalk this up as um, this is Prince Dyer just o militarily occupying Cairo with a couple of thousand hardened Viking veterans and the uh, the Tulunid dynasty just not really having the military resources necessary to dislodge them, at the moment at least. Ah, and now we have sappers. So this is, I discussed in the lifestyle traits video, um, sappers is really strong. It's going to let us siege through the remainder of our campaigns way faster, even if we don't have onagers yet. So now the, the question arises, are we going to drop the Vigmen and pick up another stack of Huskarls. I mean, we didn't come here to not rock and roll. We could take Varangian veterans. Yeah, we'll take one stack of Varangian veterans. But yeah, this this right here is why people don't usually use Varangian veterans. They are bananas. Bananas expensive. But because we are going to siege crazy fast here because of the sappers, I don't mind it. Because again, we're, we're just going to be marching our way down to here, and then we can talk a, a lot about religions and cultures and technology. We'll set up a hybrid culture. We may even form a new faith. I think it's time that we uh, go ahead and assert dominance here. So we're going we're gonna to do a different type of Casas Belli. So you can do an invade, an invade kingdom uh, once per game as a, as a Norse character. But we're going to save that. We are going to do a, a special, very weird one um, called the Varangian Adventure. So this is a special type of war, and we're going to move our entire realm 
down here to Madurai. So we're going to have uh, Prince Dyer the Stranger set himself up as an Indian prince and see um, if his strategy of finding the biggest and strongest of the Tamil kings and then picking a fight with him and seizing his capital is going to work out pretty well for him, but I expect it will. And we'll hire a couple of mercenaries. And now we have an army of 7,293. Now we're going to wait for our recently disembarked debuff to go away, and then we're going to engage the, the army of the uh, allied Tamil princes in battle. I do not anticipate this will go poorly. We do have Varangian veterans. Yeah, we lost 451 and they lost 3,000. That seems about right. Oh no, my son Askel was, was murdered. I mean, we were rivals, so that's not a big deal, but... And this, this is the war that having access to um, siege weapons is really helpful for. But we're going to come up with a solution to that probably in the next episode, where we're going to discuss um, cultures and ways to create hybrid cultures. Because you better believe we are going to form a hybrid culture down here. Because the, the Norse, once we win this war, we're going to be entirely cut off. And so becoming a hybrid culture is sort of the, the only logical solution. And importantly, we will gain the trait Adventurer, which is just a really fun, cool little ability. All right, so we have won our war. We are now the Jarldom of Pandaya Nadu. These little As Norse Asatru characters that we, we have sprinkled over the map are almost certainly going to get overthrown. But that sounds like a skill a skill issue for them. Meanwhile, down here, we have conquered a lot of long culture type provinces. Um, and so we will need to create something Tamil Norse sooner rather than later. Especially because that'll teach us how to do stuff like use onagers and recruit bamboo bows if we want them. But that'll be in the next episode of uh, CK3. And don't forget that now that we're in an entirely new area, maybe we can find new friends. I mean, maybe that's the the real the real background pull here is that Dyer he's just creating a uh, a harem anime of friends. All right, that's Walker. Take care.